earlier there was the tornado that was touching down. There you see the outline of the tornado watch box until 11 o'clock. Next graphic shows you the Kansas City up to St. Joe and out toward Kirksville under that severe thunderstorm watch, meaning damaging winds, damaging hail, or both until 10 p.m. This is video shot earlier about the tornado that was uh, very close to the Kansas side. This, of course, coming into the newsroom, and I guess it just came in here, fresh video, so I'm not sure who to attribute it to. This was, mm -hmm. um, well, as yeah, a matter of fact, what Marcus. We, maybe so. Tell you what, do we have a um, Mark? This is from... Yeah, Brian, I'm, yeah, Brian, I'm right here. Go ahead, Marcus. And yeah, this is uh, the, what we witnessed today, photographer John Woods and I tracking the storm this afternoon, and this is what we saw along I-70 uh, just this evening. We were about two miles east of the uh, Lawrence service plaza and uh, saw that this uh, storm was coming up so we decided to head back east to try to get a better vantage point and also get to a, what we thought would be a safer spot and and part you know bear with us we're feeding this back raw so you may see some quick pans and zoom uh but this is as john wood was getting these these dramatic pictures of uh, of mother nature uh this evening and you can see the, the debris there flying through the air and that's basically what we saw and we also began to, to hear the sound of the storm and got an idea of just how powerful it was. And as we were standing along the road there, the interstate people started to stop as they saw this storm just like us. And you can see the, uh, there were no cars on the interstate there. And this is what they were looking at. And this stayed on the ground for a good while. I think it was about 10, maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes, somewhere in that range. It was kind of hard to keep track of how long it was on the ground. But this is what we saw, and a little bit later, we get actually very close to the storm and actually too close for our comfort and actually had to hop out of our car and run for cover. We ran to a ditch, and so we're working to get that video back for you. But uh, that's what we saw, Brian, this afternoon, and a lot of people caught off guard along the highway, and you may be able to see in the video there all the way to the right side of the screen, a woman in a red shirt. Oh, we haven't uh, got to that yet. The side. Haven't got to that yet. But Marcus, Aaron, okay, Littles, he, Aaron Little's in the First Alert Weather Center as well. We just want to ask a okay. couple of questions of you. Yeah. How close exactly were you? Because I know with the video camera, we can see much farther than maybe you can with your, yeah. your own eyes. But it looks like you were awfully close to that debris that was flying. John and I were talking after it passed by. And we would say we were probably uh, easily 50 yards uh, away from this um, this storm, this tornado, uh, like I said, too close for comfort, and it was it was at a point where it was north of I-70, and it seemed to uh, either you know come back south or it was picking up debris from behind us, and when that's when we decided you know we need to stop, get out of the car, and get to uh, get to safety, and so with some video we're going to be getting, getting to you a little bit later that will show you just how close we were. Well, there we see you guys getting into the car while still yeah. shooting. While still shooting, you know, we are, John Woods is a, is a storm chaser, and we're both journalists. We thought it was uh, important to get these pictures right. in and, and, and cover this. But, of course, safety is number one, and uh, we did what we needed to do to uh, protect ourselves. And one other thing, and just to give us a timeline as to this, as we're zooming in actually on the debris as it's moving, as you say, close to the interstate, uh, the timeline for this was this going to be, what, about a quarter to seven? That, that seems to be about right. To be honest yeah, with you, yeah. I wasn't paying too much attention to the uh, to my watch. Sure. But I can tell you, at the same time, we were on the phone. Or we were, uh, Johnny Rollins was in the air shooting this same uh, twister, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. as it was going over I-70. So we had a ground perspective, and he was up in the air uh, looking at it. And you also mentioned that there were other people who were also taking refuge on the side of the road at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and their reactions? Yeah. Their, you know, their reaction was a, a, a lot like our reaction. It was absolutely surreal. Uh, I have never been that close to a tornado. And it was the same for the people who we had spoken with uh, who had run for cover out of their cars. We actually saw about... I'd say it was about eight people who were going west on I-70. They saw this storm coming right about the same time that we, you know, we saw it. Mm -hmm. They ran from the westbound lanes of I-70 mm -hmm. over to the eastbound lanes. They jumped over the highway divider to get over to the uh, to the ditch on the other side of the highway. 
And I talked to a, a woman uh, who came back, and she told me all she could do was pray. Would pray was pray that her daughter and her granddaughter were going to be okay. She lost her shoes when she jumped into the ditch. When we met her, she came out barefoot. She said she didn't know where her shoes were. And she was so emotional. Uh, as for now, me, as, as I was emotional as well. Sorry to, uh, uh, it was a traumatic experience. Hey, and Marcus, now this is you, I guess, emerging from the ditch, I would guess? You're running back up yeah, the hill? Yeah, coming back up, we, it, was, it was still on the northern side of the interstate. Uh, but like I said, the debris was coming up from behind us, and uh, it, it, the rain just picked up, and the wind was picking up behind us, and, and that's when we, we said we need to stop and get someplace safe, get off to a ditch. And so, yeah, what you just saw there was us coming back from the cover, um, trying to get to a safe spot. Nice. And I, we have our new tools that we're using uh, in this business uh, to, you know, wherever we are, we can get video, and you may see me with a little camera in my hand. Yeah, we're seeing we it right now. Camera. Right. <laughs> and so we can try to get those images and uh, as quickly as we can. Now, what you're looking at, these are the people I was talking about who jumped over the interstate uh, wall, and they're coming out of the uh, from the ditch there. We went to go check on them to make sure they were okay and uh, see what they saw. So. Marcus, this is Aaron in the Weather Center. I know that uh, in some of that video, you can see the very heavy rainfall that folks were driving through. It looks like along yeah. the interstate. Flooding is definitely going to be a concern for folks this evening. What is it in regards to the rainfall that's on the ground? Are you seeing any kind of flooding now in the aftermath of those storms as well? Um, I can tell you where we are now. We have moved back to Bonner Springs uh, to our satellite truck so we can feed these images out to you. Uh, but over towards where Peggy is located, I believe off of, I believe it's County Road 23, there's some, it's a, it's a dirt road there, and there's a lot of water going over that road. As far as the paved surface street, um, there's not that much standing water over the roadway, but obviously along some of the, along the sides and some of the ditch, there's a lot of uh, high water.